Hi, welcome to America Uncensored. I'm your host, Chris Chappell. The nation is still reeling from the Las Vegas mass shooting, where one man, armed with two dozen weapons, opened fire on unsuspecting concert goers from his hotel room. It was the deadliest mass shooting in recent history. Good job, America. We made it a whole year since the last deadliest mass shooting. But seriously, in Las Vegas, 58 people died, not including the shooter, and hundreds were injured. In the face of such seemingly random evil, there really is only one appropriate response. Flee to Antarctica. Or we could get Congress to actually do something. No, wait, the first option is more realistic. Look, we're all scared out of our minds right now. And the best decisions are always made in the grips of abject terror. Just like all those surveillance measures Congress passed following 9-11. No one regrets that, right? Now I know what you're thinking. If only all those Vegas concert goers had concealed weapons. Then they could have randomly shot at the hotel a block away and everything would have been fine. Unfortunately, this has become a cycle. There's a mass shooting. Everyone freaks out. Calls are made for common sense gun control. Congress takes no meaningful action whatsoever, and then things die down and all is well again, until the next mass shooting two months later. That's why today I'll be talking about gun control and why it's such a divisive issue on all sides. Americans own a lot of guns. I mean, sure, it's nothing compared to a country at war like Syria. Just kidding. America has twice as many guns per person as Syria. You think we'd let Syria be number one? Americans own an estimated three to four hundred million guns. That's basically enough to arm every man, woman, and child in the country. I'm not kidding about the children. Every week, someone gets shot by a toddler. Now, I think we can all agree. Toddlers should be locked up, which is why we have preschools. The reason Americans can own so many guns is because the Constitution guarantees it. People in America own guns for a variety of reasons. Hunting, self-defense, safeguarding against future government tyranny, or even protection from the inevitable zombie apocalypse. 39% of Americans have a gun in their home. Many people have more than one gun. And some people have way more than one gun. Nothing would or can prevent me from buying as many guns as I want to. Now, the right to bear arms seems all well and good until people get hurt. According to the Center for Disease Control and Prevention, every year, an average of 33,000 people are killed by guns. So how can we save lives? The answer is obvious. More guns equals more death, right? So we need to enact legislation to limit the number of guns, especially the more dangerous ones. Except. It turns out that not all protest signs are accurate. Shocking, I know. Because if you look at the data, it's not clear that more guns does equal more deaths. Well, okay, states with more guns do have more gun deaths. That's technically accurate, but totally misleading. Like when you tell your mom you have a gig on Broadway, but you're this guy. Because these statistics don't account for one really important, tragic factor. Most of those gun deaths are suicides. Suicides are terrible, but people also commit suicide in countries where it's almost impossible to get a gun. And when it comes to gun laws, people are more concerned about stopping gun homicides, people killing each other. Now, if you look at that data, it tells a totally different story from gun deaths. U.S. states with more gun ownership actually have slightly fewer gun homicides meaning more guns correlates with fewer murders. Though to be fair, the correlation is weak, which is why the line is less steep. And anyway, let me be really, really clear about this. Correlation does not mean cause and effect. Just like, and this is a real statistic, there is a strong correlation between per capita cheese consumption and the number of people who die by becoming tangled in their bed sheets. Which is why I've always said we need to ban bed sheets and cheese. Anyway, my point is there's lots of data out there and it's easy to cherry pick facts to back up your argument. If you're anti-gun, take this chart and spread it on social media. If you're pro-gun, take this chart and spread it on social media. Oh, 
and neither of those charts represents the thing that sparked this conversation in the first place, cheese consumption, I mean mass shootings. In the past two decades, there have been 43 mass shootings in the US, resulting in 432 deaths. And I know the numbers change depending on how you count mass shootings, but the point is, there's a lot of them. No other first world country even comes close. USA number one. And every time mass shootings happen, especially big ones like Las Vegas and Orlando, they spark a brief but loud national debate about who's right and who's wrong, who's a heartless monster, and who wants to destroy America. But at least there's some common ground. According to a recent Gallup poll, 86% of Americans favor universal background checks on all gun sales, instead of what we have now, which is just background checks on most gun sales. And they're right. Universal background checks would stop law-abiding criminals from buying their guns down at the local gun shop. But it's possible, just maybe, that some people who plan to kill someone would be willing to stoop so low as to acquire guns outside the system. According to this report from the Department of Justice, among criminals who were arrested with a firearm, only 14% had bought or traded for the gun from a store, pawn shop, flea market, or gun show. The vast majority got their gun from the same place they get their fruitcake, family, friends, or the black market. So universal background checks might have some impact, but probably won't deter serious criminals from getting guns. And how about mass shootings? What kinds of laws can we implement that would stop those? It's hard to say because the shooters simply refuse to be consistent about how they commit mass murders. Sometimes they use assault rifles, which by the way, there's no nationwide definition of what an assault rifle even is. Others use handguns and some use other types of guns. Sometimes they get their guns legally, other times illegally. Some of them have criminal records, others don't. And in the past 20 years, only four states have had more than two mass shootings. And mass shootings only account for a half of a tenth of 1% of all gun homicides. It's the red slice of the pie. So because every mass shooting is different in a lot of ways, it's hard to conclude whether certain gun laws would have prevented them or would prevent them in the future. You'd think though that at least having more gun restrictions in general would help. But apparently, that's not what the data shows. Take my home state of California, please. California has some of the strictest gun laws in the country. Background checks on all sales, even private sales. A 10-day waiting period, a ban on assault weapons, limits on ammo magazines, and more. And California has had more mass shootings than any other state. Other states with strict gun laws, like Connecticut, have also had multiple mass shootings. So should you move to Idaho just because it's had fewer mass shootings? No, you should not move to Idaho, not for any reason. Honestly, don't even bother visiting. It's mostly just cows and potatoes. Well, and guns. Idaho has twice as many guns per person as California, just fewer mass shootings. And this illustrates the crux of the matter, why the gun debate goes on and on. Mass shootings are scary. Innocent people die. The incidents feel completely arbitrary, and there is no clear set of gun laws that can be proven to help once you actually look at the data and how little impact certain states' laws have had. So every time a mass shooting happens, and Americans scream for Congress to finally frickin' do something, Congress does nothing. But in this case, there's no clear evidence for what Congress should do to prevent this next time. Also, there's the NRA, but that's a whole other topic. Fortunately, there's some good news in all this. Even though it's not clear what, if any, gun laws can stop gun homicides or mass shootings, there's still a lot of ways we can reduce gun violence in America. Interestingly, you know what else is correlated with more gun homicides? Poverty. States with higher poverty have more gun homicides. So it's possible that if we as a nation can support job training, entrepreneurship, and other things that help Americans get out of poverty, we'll see a less violent country. Wealthy people simply don't shoot each other as often. They just 
quietly cheat each other out of millions of dollars, like they do on Wall Street. There are also a lot of non-gun-related programs that can reduce violence in different ways. Like Cure Violence, a community outreach group that aims to stop violence by interrupting conflicts and helping people in the community. But a Justice Department study found that at one point, the group helped reduce violence by 40 to 70 percent in some of the areas where they were operating. If programs like this could be expanded, it might have far more impact than relying on Congress. And if that doesn't work, there's always Antarctica. So what do you think? Leave your comments below. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. See you next time. Thank you.